thousands of babies are put up for adoption every year and thousands are placed in very loving homes raised by caring families. And now more than ever, many of those babies are growing up and they're searching for their birth parents. The results can be one of the warmest family reunions you could imagine. And today, we have one of those reunions happening right here in the show. Plus, the multi-talented Dolly Parton has once again turned to the big screen, this time as a radio talk show host. The new movie is called Straight Talk. And the hottest new fashion statement is... The Hat! Coming up next, we have a, another wonderful reunion story. And if you are one of the 300,000 Canadians that uh, is adopted and looking for your birth parents, this lady can give you some help in how to try and find those people. I told you that there are over 300,000 Canadians. And like those 300,000, Madeline Allen was an adopted child. And like thousands of other adoptees, she was very happy in her adoptive family. However, once married and a mother herself, Madeline set out on the journey of finding her birth parents. Now, this quest would dominate her life for over four years. And in her book, Reunion, she chronicles the dead-end streets, the locked files, and the very uncooperative system that denied her her right to know her own heritage. Joining us now to tell us her dramatic and her heartwarming story, Madeline Allen. What was it that made you finally decide to seek out your birth parents? Probably the pivot was the birth of my first child, my daughter Brenda. And it was that thought that if I were ever separated from this child, for one reason or another, not knowing what would happen to her, that was the beginning. And very often with adoptees, there's something that makes you look into your own soul, into your own mortality, your own future that sets you off. It took you four years to find Seven, actually. Seven all told? Okay. All, seven all told, but four very intensively. You ran into uh, some particular difficult roadblocks and uncooperative systems. Well, the bottom line is that birth records for adoptees are sealed. Anything which will give identifiable information is non-existent to you. Your birth certificate has been, frankly, falsified. The names on my birth certificate are those of my adoptive parents. How did you finally crack your own case? You, you had a bit of help from somebody who... Well, there were two things. One, I was extremely lucky in as much that when I applied for my adoption order, which is something that you have the right to have, I had a window of being able to get it without knowing my birth name. Now you have to have your birth name before you can get it. This was just between laws. And then I proved that I did not exist. So I went back to the Children's Aid Society and said, this, this is mad. I've proved my father doesn't exist. I've proved my mother doesn't exist. Was my name a Jane Doe name? And that is something they did sometimes, will just make up a name. And I was said, told, no, no, that was the name of one of your parents. And I said, well, which one? I'm sorry, we can't tell you that. And then the girl said, but if you ask me, I will say, tell you if you're wrong. So I said, was this my father's name, or my mother's name? And she said, no. I said, then it was my father's. I didn't tell you that. Oh, what a nice lady. She couldn't actually give you the information, but she actually helped you out a great deal. Uh, there are numerous stories like that of people, social workers, leaving the file on the desk and going to the room and say, I have 10 minutes to make a phone call. The, these, the social workers are also trapped within the system. Because the system today says, and the, this law is still in place, that, what, what will they tell you if you're seeking your adoptive parents today? You can get your non-identifiable information. Now, Which is like medical? Not necessarily. Uh, the non-identifiable information is anything about your background which does not give location, education institution, uh, job, anything that you might use to pinpoint your parents. Right. And this is what I use to do a lot of the tracking down of mine because there are ways of using that information if you have a bit of a detective mind. Give us an example of what a non-identifying piece of information might be. Your mother was musical, sang in the church choir. All right, but this gives you a lead. If she sang in a church choir, they were probably members of the church, of some church. Now, the family was from England. Probably, if they're from England, they're Church of England. Gee, really play detective. Then you start getting into diocesan records. 
and uh, that's the sort of thing you have to do. But medical records you mentioned there, even if there were medical records, apart from the fact that you had to say a normal birth, right. you, your parents are young people who probably have, uh, you know, are healthy young adults at that point, and at that time there was simply no concept of Right. the importance of genealogy. Anyway, you go through all of this, the lady the children's aid gives you a yes or no, then you discover there was a clerical, clerical error when they they'd misspelled your father's name? Yes. You see, I went originally going for my birth name, having been that name of my father, and he would have been in the easiest to eliminate because he'd been in the military. Right. So I phoned up military archives and said, do you have a record of this man? and they gave me two with that name but the biographical details didn't fit you see here's where the non-identifiable information was a help okay now you go through all of this and then one day um madeline well this is a day that madeline will never forget <laughs> it's what her birth mother said to her when she first telephoned her um you she called you by your birth name she said yes. it really must be patricia it how really wonderful and won't the others be surprised well here is <laughs> others? Others? <laughs> Which leads us into another thing. Uh, I'd like you now to meet the woman who spoke those very kind words, who Madeline struggled to find for over four years. Please welcome Madeline's birth mother, a Aileen very, Atwood. A very special lady. <laughs> now, look, talk about peas in the pod. Look at these two. <laughs> Just amazing. When your daughter phoned, when you when you're on the phone with her, what was going through your mind? Nothing. <laughs> Were you in shock? I <laughs> I don't think I heard much after she said, "Does the date July the second, nineteen forty-two?" After that, I I just knew I I knew who it was. Had you thought about her over all those years? Now and again, yes, you do. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you just don't forget something like that. I'm not sure. Is it? Uh, but I've been told that it's on the birthday of the child that the mother is really a difficult day to get through. That's right. That's right. So you've been back together Remember. this time? Seven years now. Seven years yes. now. And you, uh, did you, uh, families all met and you met the adoptive? You, you tell them. <laughs> <laughs> well, my adoptive parents are dead now, but um, the, certainly the cousins. The, the first big family meeting was at our 25th anniversary wedding last, uh, a year ago. And that brought all the families together, and it was very positive and very nice. Very and nice. my son go, went to school up near Aline and the family, and he just sort of dropped in and cadged Sunday dinner. So it's become a blended family. Very much. Now, they don't all work out this perfectly, you know, and, and this is a very good situation that's worked out. But the thing that even when it doesn't work out, when the, the people don't get along, but it, it removes that one huge problem that kids who are adopted have to live with. And I think it's the thing, the one thing that drives you crazier than anything else when you're an adopted child. Yes, it's that black hole. But I think what you have to look for is expectations. Like anything else, for success, your expectations and your goals have to be reasonable. Right. I mean, if you are expecting to run through a field of daisies with the sun shining and the violins <laughs> playing, probably you're going to trip over a cow pat in the middle of that lovely field. Right. But if you want knowledge that is reasonable now this one's worked out ex extremely well though you, you two are not only just similar in appearance but you say that you're very similar in many other ways <laughs> very much yeah i think she is oh yes absolutely <laughs> <laughs> we're going to take a break when we come back we're going to bring our newfound sisters back and then we're going to talk about the emotion and the difficulties of finding a lost <laughs> Well, we have here the two sisters who found each other, and we have uh, mom and daughter together. And I was just asking how you refer to Aline, and you call her your... Well, I call her Aline face-to-face. -face. If I'm talking to one of my brothers or sisters, I'll say, how's mom? And, or, and uh, if uh, I'm introducing her to somebody, I will say, I would like you to meet my, usually my special mom yeah. or my, my birth mother, if it's a formal type of thing, but to special other members of the family, my special mother. You still consi you consider your adoptive parents to be your mother and father. Yes. And you consider now that you have a... I have two families. Two families. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I say that because it, it, it's really an interesting situation, dynamics-wise. I'm trying to think for most people to give up a child, you still consider yourself the child's mother, but you know you weren't really the mother, so you... That, uh, how do you feel you fit in here? That decision was made a long time ago, and to me, that 
that was it. it in fairness to a child but I don't believe that now <laughs> you don't believe that no now? no because the whole everything has changed so they said these were warriors people were going overseas I expected to go overseas you know just the right. whole thing so different I've said you know it's interesting that you what's that old saying about you can't you can choose your friends but you can't, can't choose, choose your, your family. family is what they say <laughs> but when you're put into a situation where suddenly somebody pops up and says hi I'm your sister hi I'm your brother hi and all of a sudden it's uh, people expect there to be a natural bonding but there hasn't been any time you, you ladies have spent no. together so you're gonna have to develop this over time yeah, yeah. trying to do it on the phone is not easy <laughs> You've just got a voice. <laughs> you have no person there, you know. It's very hard. You, it's, you sometimes don't even know what to say. I don't. <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> well, I understand that between you, one of you is a little more conservative. You're a little more conservative, Wendy, and you're a little more outgoing, Dana. With, and it, so it's just kind of hard to try and find that match. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't like their sisters and brothers anyway. Yeah, They've been raised true. with them. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> the shared memories. Yeah. Yeah. When in your search, what, for you, what was the big breakthrough? It, uh, my search was very easy. I just, um, after I went through the adoption uh, agency and they just gave us a little bit of information but said they couldn't do anything else unless she was to file to look for her family. Then um, within another week I wrote to my uncle who lives in Halifax because that's where she was adopted out. So I thought, well, maybe there's a way, maybe, maybe she's still there and they can put something in a paper or some way. So I wrote to him and uh, he called my mom to make sure that everything was fine and to go ahead with it and within a couple of weeks he had hired a lawyer to do it because that's the way he f he was also adopted and he found his mother that way and within no time they said we think that you know we found her but we're not 95 percent sure or we're not totally sure so they kind of drafted me a letter to send to her to say you know I think you might be my sister and I went right from there. One of the things that you put in this book um, uh is a very specific way of contacting somebody in fact it's almost and it's a formula you had learned and you used it on your phone call it's a yes. very dramatic two pages here about about the phone call that you made yeah. and there's a there is there's actually a formula for doing this this was suggested to me by parent finders and let's face it it could be quite a shock if you particularly if you phoned in the middle of the the bridge party or when the whole family was over for dinner so you have to try to find a, a time that is uh, is good and also and actually you said this was the wrong way yes <laughs> I I don't believe that an adoptee should go and make first contact but by the way the situation oh. is now there there is no other way it there is the adoption disclosure registry if a match is made then the whole process goes for counseling and third party contact but there's a four and a half year waiting list and four and a half years that's just down from eight years see so real progress here a real progress in quebec it's basically infinite because there's a year waiting list for emergency medical contact I said to you earlier that I do know stories of people who have gone through this procedure and it was, a, it was not a happy thing. Um, and I've seen people go through it. I have never met anyone who said, I'm sorry I did it, however. It's only the people out there who still can't find their way. Yes. The, again, there was a survey done. Uh, a lot of research has been done in the States on this. And this was the overall overwhelming, overwhelming feeling that there were only about two out of something like 5,000 who said, I really wish I had they hadn't found me this was a question to the birth parent because let's face it the birth parent is usually the person who is surprised I mean I knew I was searching for seven years you didn't you were just getting along happily with your life <laughs> that's true actually I never thought of that you're the one who's doing all the searching so for you after seven years or four years it's like but the, for the other person this is like a, a bolt of lightning out of that's the right. blue I mean when you hung up the phone did you sleep for a couple of days did you I didn't have a chance she was there next weekend <laughs> Guess who I'm there, I'll be next weekend. <laughs> you have a little something to tell the others about That's, it, didn't you? I had something to tell the Did others. Did anybody else know? Had you kept it a secret all these years? Nobody Did, knew. Nobody? I had one, one sister only who knew. And how was it, was it received? Were there, what did what, you say to the rest of the family when you broke the news? I had a little family conference. <laughs> and uh, they were very happy about it. Isn't that wonderful? My, my, my oldest daughter said, Hooray, I'm not the oldest any longer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. do, you, um, do you have some advice for people who are starting to look? If you, if you, yours was a little easier, mm -hmm. but... Not to give up and to, um, uh, to keep yeah. looking. Yeah. 
not to give up what is it the average length of time it's been taking to find for you it was seven for me, years it was seven years i was at a parent finders meeting last night and there was a couple of people who stood up and they'd found them within a matter of weeks i would have oh. found it on the first phone call if that hadn't been that filing error there i've given the plot away um, <laughs> but it varies it depends totally on the situation it depends on the help you get it depends on where you come in the uh, in the list if you do it that way just one last thing when you put somebody up for adoption today if you're if you're a mother putting a child up for adoption do you at that point decide whether or not there will be dis uh, whether it will be private or is it automatically now there will be certain information given out or there is certain information which must be given but still it is not required by the government that the birth parent keep an ongoing record mm. of the medical background and this is really the bottom line of what adoptees are saying to the government is that we have not only a need to know our medical background but a right to know our background and this is not in the law even today well a very good example is that i have glaucoma now this is a, a hereditary thing it could be and if Madeline didn't know that, she wouldn't particularly ask her, her uh, optician or optometrist. These things. One last important. thing, you not only uh, find your mother, you, how many brothers and sisters here do we uh, encounter in this? How many in your new family? I have uh, two brothers and two sisters and nine nieces Mrs. and nephews, <laughs> three of whom have arrived s since I have. This is a tribe. This is not a family. <laughs> and we have another tribe over here with lots of uh, four. You have four children. You have? I have two. Two. Two tribes have come to you, four tribes. It's <laughs> wonderful. If you are looking for your birth parents and you uh, would like some information, the book is called Reunion, The Search for My Birth Family. Coming up next, Dolly Parton talks about her new movie. It's called Straight Talk. Thank you all. Continued happiness. Thank you.